How's it going, guys? So today I created this animation and I'm so, so proud of it. How did I make that? Well, I was scrolling on Pinterest yesterday and looking for some ideas and I came across this animation by an artist named Anna. Now I'm gonna link this artist's stuff in the description, Instagram and Twitter. Their work is amazing. Please go follow them. Please go show them some support. Credit where credit is due. It's amazing. So I wanted to figure out how do I do this in Blender? I think that was done in Cinema 4D. How do you get that done? And when I was looking at it, you can see how the motion is very circular but it's not just spinning on one axis. To me, it looks like a circle attached to another circle. And I also couldn't figure like, how do you animate those pieces just kind of popping in and appearing in? And to me, that was probably geometry nodes. So let's figure out how to do this right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so like I mentioned, step number one is getting that movement down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit shift A and get a plane. We're gonna hop into geometry nodes. And I'm gonna be doing this mostly in geometry nodes to get the movement down. So I'm gonna click new and I'm gonna delete the input. And what I want is a mesh circle. And the reason why is that is gonna allow us to have eight vertices, which is eight spheres, just like Anna had in their animation. So we have that and we can now attach things to points. So let's do an instance on points here and that's really gonna make it nice. So instance on points, plop it there. And we can go and get an icosphere as our base object and plug that right into the instance slot. We're gonna subdivide it and then bring down a radius pretty significantly, something like this. And we'll just go ahead and smooth it with a node. So set shade smooth, now we have that. But the problem is, so we can now rotate this here, but the animation is much more interesting and much more weird and different. So what we can do is I'm gonna hit Shift A and get in a curved circle. Click this guy and we can go to our constraints and that's where the power comes. So we'll do a follow path and select that circle. And now this can animate here. So let's really quickly pull that animation off. The actually getting it correct is kind of the easy part. It was really difficult for me to figure out, but actually getting it is the very, very few steps. So I'm gonna go back to frame zero here and I'm gonna click the uh, keyframe on the offset. I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames. We're gonna go to the end here and I'm just gonna type in uh, 200. That's gonna give me two uh, rotations just to give it a nice speed to it. Now it's gonna do that. It's gonna go around it two times. So now we have it. But what we need to do to now achieve the rest of it, I'm gonna just go back to layout view so we can see it nice and big. What we can do is I'm gonna go back stay at frame zero. We're gonna go here and we need to animate the movement of this object as well while it's going around this object, which is super fun. So I'm gonna click here and I want it to uh, rotate or spin twice, which is gonna be 720, but in this case, negative 720, insert keyframe. And now if I go here, watch, see the, this red line and this green line, see the object on it, they are staying consistent and that means this is working. It's really cool. It's perfect. So now that I have this motion figured out, the next hard part is how do I get these to animate in? And I couldn't figure it out. I kind of was just going to give up and show you guys this. But literally while I was laying in bed, the idea came to me. So guys, if you, if you can't figure things out, sometimes just stop working on it and go to bed. Give it a day. So let's do that. So let's hop on over, click on this guy, and make sure you're back in your geometry nodes tab. And what you can do is add in a mesh, a uh, separate geometry. It's a node that I use constantly and it's just a no brainer. Make sure you're set to points because points is what we're deleting here. Um, so what we're gonna do now is get a random value, set it to Boolean so we just get one uh, value here and we'll plug it right into the selection. And what that's going to do is delete them in and out. So how cool is this? You can now kind of view it and bring one in 
and bring one in like that. So by animating the probability, and you can bring up a different random seed so they can animate, uh, different ones can animate in and animate out. I'm gonna bring my seed back to zero just to kind of keep it uh, the original. But this probability is how you animate them in. So let's just do that really quickly. Um, and so I'm just gonna start at frame one for this, bring your probability so there's just one sitting there. I'm gonna hit I and then go to maybe frame frame 80, maybe frame 100, and then bring your probability in and then hit I. And there we go. They animate in just the way we want. And if you want the animation to loop, you'll just bring that probability back down to one. That's what I did in my original animation, but I'll leave that up to you because I ended up needing 400 frames for this. We're just gonna have some fun here. So that is how you animate them in and out to get that, the two really for me, the most difficult parts of this animation. Now the last kind of difficult thing for me to figure out was creating those gutters that the spheres are going in and out, which really creates context and makes it look really beautiful. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top and let's get in. I wanna get to where this sphere, this bottom sphere is at the lowest point it's gonna be so that we can model correctly. And I'm gonna hit shift A and I'm gonna get a cylinder. And then here in the add cylinder sections here on the rotation, I'm just gonna go by 90. Then I'm gonna bring my radius down so that it just kind of brings it right there. Maybe bring it around and you can also go to your wireframe view just to be sure that this is behaving properly. And then bring your um, depth all the way down to where it meets it there. So now that we're done, I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab to go to edit mode, go to the edge select. I believe it's called edge select. I'm gonna hold down control and alt just want to select this. There we go. Control Alt and then Control Alt, just like that. And then go here to your bevel. Just going to zoom in here and then use your scroll wheel to subdivide the bevel. Just bring it to something like this. Just kind of eyeball it. It really doesn't matter too much. And then go here to your loop cut, add your loop cut, and then I'm just going to bring it up to 100 cuts. And that could potentially be too much geometry, but it's not really that heavy anyway. So now we have the object that is going to cut into our scene and I'm gonna shade smooth. Now we need to uh, array it. So we have eight tubes or four, I don't know, eight sections for these spheres to go through. So we're gonna go ahead and get an empty plane axis, click back on this object and we're gonna go here to the modifiers and add in an array modifier. Give it a count of eight, uh, uncheck relative offset. We're gonna to go to object offset and click on the empty. See how he's going up? That means the empty is not done correctly. So we need to go to our rotation and rotate by 90. And then from the math that I remember, take your empty object right here and on the Z rotation do 22.5. And that is gonna be the perfect rotation. If we go to our wireframe, you can see all the spheres are within their pods perfectly. How great is this? It is just totally a perfect setup. Just a tiny bit of math really goes a long way. All right, so now we can use these as our Boolean objects. So what I'm gonna do is here in the modifiers, hover over these little dots and hit Control A, apply that. And then what we can do is in edit mode, hit A just to make sure everything is selected, hit F3 and type in separate by loose parts. And what that's going to do is now have these as loose parts. So it, the, the computer can kind of handle it better when we uh, Boolean. So what you can do is just go ahead and select all of these objects, hit M, new collection, call them cut or really anything, you can call it Jonathan. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, so now you have these as cutters and I'm just gonna hit the uh, check mark to remove them if you want to. So I'm gonna hit, go ahead and hit Shift A and get a plane. Scale it up, you know, a nice size, something like this. You wanna give room for margin with your camera. And then I'm gonna hit Control A, apply scale, add a solidify modifier and just bring it down, you know, reasonably, something like this. Now is the Boolean, so hit a uh, Boolean modifier. Down here, go from object to collection, select that cut collection and just let it, just give it a second because it's gonna take a second to calculate, especially depending on your computer. Might take a minute, but I promise the wait is worth it. It makes, makes your life easy. All right, so if I go up here to the outline or hit the check mark and I just remove that, we can see now we have this. It really, just really ugly. So what you can do is here with this object, uh, go here to this little triangle icon on normals, click auto smooth. And that's going to take a second to kind of load through. And now you really have nice looking edges. How awesome is that? 
Now let's go ahead and kind of jump the gun here and apply both of these modifiers because we're gonna be using an image texture for the ground and you need to be able to map this properly. Now I noticed that these gutters are really deep and honestly they're deeper than I want. So what you can do is actually, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, I'm gonna hide the Boolean, I'm gonna hit that little object right there. Oops, I clicked it again, now I have to wait. All right, so you can click that to hide it bring your cutters back and what you can do is you can right click and select objects and I'm just gonna bring them up to about here. Something like that. I don't want them to be super deep. All right, so I'm gonna hit the check mark right there and then bring our Boolean back by hitting the little computer icon. All right, I like this. I'm gonna hit this drop down and turn on a uh, cavity and shadow just so we can see things a, uh, a bit nicer. So here we have it. I don't know what that is. It's probably a weird artifact. Uh, but now we have uh, this coming through really nicely. Now really quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select this little circle here, select these objects, and uh, make sure that they're not intersecting that, they're not going down into that. So just bring it right here. And that's gonna set them up properly for this whole scene. And it looks really, really nice. Okay, now click back on this plane. What I wanna do now is go ahead and apply the solidify and the boolean by hovering over here and just hitting control A. Now when you do that, it is gonna take a second to apply that because it is gonna be kind of slow and then hit control A on this boolean as well. All right, so now we have this. If we go here, we can see, if we hit tab into edit mode, we have all of our faces, which is really, really awesome. So make sure you hit tab and hit A to make, all, make sure all faces are selected. Now we're gonna unwrap it. Now we're gonna unwrap it. So go ahead and uh, hit tab, A to select everything, and then hit U to unwrap, and go ahead and select project from view. Now make sure you hit the tilde key. When you do this, hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab, you can go to the top so it's perfectly flat. And then hit U, project from view, and right down here are these project from view, uh, view settings. Click scale to bounds, and that's and uh, orthographic. That's gonna make everything really nice for you so that when you go to UV editing, it's already set up perfectly in your UV editor. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the face select here in the edit mode and delete these faces. And then I'm just gonna unwrap it one more time because I forgot to delete the faces, but I don't even know if you don't if you need to, but I'm gonna just do a project from view anyway. And then um, if we go back to UV editing, it looks, it looks awesome. All right, now we can go ahead and get in our material. So for me, I went to uh, ambientcg.com and I typed in wood and I ended up selecting this wood material right here, the wood, the uh, painted wood 007C. And I went and downloaded the 4K. Now, if you have real-time materials, we have some really awesome uh, UV wood materials right here that you can select from, edit from, change your colors, change your materials. They're much more powerful and useful, in my opinion, than image textures, depending on context, of course. Um, but if you have real-time materials, you can use that if you haven't heard of it. Um, you saw it at the beginning of the video, so you can check that out if you want. We have some great stuff for that. But I also wanna provide a free alternative. So go ahead and download those from uh, Ambient CG or whatever, literally whatever material you wanna use. This is completely up to your creativity. Um, now we can go into the Shading tab and apply these, these uh, textures. So I went and unzipped my original file and you can go ahead and just click New and then with that Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I'm gonna hit Control T. That's gonna set up everything we need with, with the UV socket, very convenient. And I'm just gonna use my uh, painted wood right here, use color. And here we have it, and I'm just gonna click and drag, click and drag here and um, tile it by two. So now that we have that, I'm gonna hit G and move those over and let's kind of move this up. I'm gonna hit Control Shift D I'm gonna hit that number two and I'm gonna go ahead and select in my roughness. And we're gonna plug color into the roughness. And right here with the roughness, go ahead and go to a uh, non-color and that's really gonna make that roughness actually behave properly. And the last thing, Control Shift D, hit that number two. Let's go ahead and click that normal. Let's get in a bump node, plug color into height, do a distance of 0.1 and a strength right to halfway and my cat has joined us on this blender journey. All right, so let's plug that into the normal and let that load. So now if we go to cycles and we pop in one of those default HDRIs, we have a really nice looking scene. What I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and get a really simple material. So let's hop up, or hop up into geometry nodes. 
for these spheres. And because it's geometry nodes, we have to add a set material node right here. And then we can go ahead and select new, make it metallic, and then make the roughness pretty far down. And then we could just select it right here. And now we have these nice little spheres. So, so far we now have this animation just looking awesome. Last thing we need is lighting and the lighting is really, really simple. So what I did was I went over here to Polyhaven and I selected an HDRI that was indoors, like a house. So we can go ahead and click on the indoor uh, HDRI. So just scroll through and uh, pick the one that you think might really work. I, I ended up using this one, the Brown Photo Studio 06. It's, it's just perfect and the color works with wood being that there's like the similar color wood here. So it just works with the vibe and the reflections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the drop down and remove that default HDRI. And let's go ahead and throw that HDRI right in there. So click on the world settings, click on this little yellow dot here and go to environment texture, open. And I'm gonna go ahead and find that HDRI and it's going to be right there. All right, cool. So now we have that. I'm gonna give it a strength of 0.3. Really the, the thing, the job that this HDRI is doing is one, filling in shadows. So it would have pure black shadows, but also, really helping us with reflections. Otherwise this material would just have these massive black splotches and it just wouldn't look very good and very polished and professional. Last thing I wanna do here is go ahead and get in um, a big area light to go right there, I think, yeah, right there. So we're gonna go ahead and my cat keeps licking my arm. I hope you got, that's not coming through the mic. That would be annoying. Um, let's go to the light, area light, and we'll move him right over here and then we'll go ahead and rotate him so he's pointing down a little bit. I do want him to point down a little bit to make a better kind of light gradient. And then let's go ahead and give it a scale of, I mean, a power of like 2,000. That might get the job done. And then if I go to the, this little camera icon and I scroll down to color management, we can bring our contrast to high. That was perfect. Perfect execution. All right, let's hit the tilde key and go to the top and let's get a camera. Control Alt Zero, snap that to view, and I'm gonna hit G and middle click and move it. And it's safe it was like it did like that. Just hit G and just kind of position it to how you want it to be. And let's go ahead. I'm gonna go to my light paths, click and drag everything to one, turn off reflective and refractive, and let's render it and see how that looks. I'm gonna be rendering at 300 samples. All right, so this is the finished piece. It just looks it looks awesome. I love it so much. All right, let's go ahead and let me show you how to export this guy and we'll be done. I like it at 300 samples. You can honestly bring it lower and denoise, um, but for me, I like it. So let's go here to the printer icon. Go ahead and select a folder where you want to put all of these PNG sequences in because it's a cycles renderer. It's smart to do a PNG sequence. Um, and then right here on color management, just kind of keep it where it's at, PNG sequence. Render, render animation, let it render out, compile it. And when you're done, you'll have something really cool like this animation right here. Um, this one was a doozy, but it's so cool and so useful. And it's just, it's a cool output. Uh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some really cool stuff there. Feel free to check out Real Time Materials. It helps really, helps me uh, keep doing this for a living. It's really cool. Um, yeah. All right. See you guys in the next tutorial.